Now I'm already knowing what some of you are going to say. You're gonna be like, where's part two? Where is chapter 18 to 35? Listen, bro, the video's not done yet. I'm hoping to get it out by Friday, but at the latest, it's gonna come out on Sunday. I figured I'd cover this chapter because even though part two isn't out yet, I am all caught up on 100 Years Quest, and I also wanted to give you guys some more fairy tale content. So with all that said, let's do this thing. So at the start of chapter 36, we get the battle between Mira Jane and Scalion, and oh my word, she cannot touch him in the slightest. That Ash magic is way too OP. I think the only people who stand a chance against Scalion are Wendy, because she's kind of like the direct counter, and it's been shown that she can actually do damage to him, and maybe Guildarts, because maybe he could like split the Ash magic, I don't know. Okay, those are just my guesses though. Anyhow, while Mira Jane and Scalion are fighting, Lucy starts getting wrapped up by Lisana, who is in her snake animal soul form. Lisana then says that there are two ways to deal with someone who goes against the white mage. The first way is to execute them. The second way is to dye them white. Bro, then Lisana starts hitting that trust in me, just in me. Like this is not Jungle Book. Also. Why she act all seductive with it? You got a thing for Lucy, Lisana? Golly, bro, you do you, I guess. Meanwhile, at the left city church, Kyria is getting destroyed by Loxus. I mean, she throws out a powerful attack, a blade dragon's rending roar, but all that really does is just cut up Loxus's cloak a bit. Now, we don't get to see any more of this fight in the chapter, but I'm pretty sure it's safe to guess that she will in no way gain the upper hand. I think Loxus is just too strong for her. Now while that's going down, Jalal uses Bind Snake on Erza, taking away her ability to move. He then picks her up and leaves with the goal to dye Erza white. So, so far we have Lucy who has been wrapped up by Lisana and is about to be dyed white, and now we have Erza who has lost the ability to move and is also about to be dyed white. And I would actually really like it if they did get dyed because that would just dwindle the crew's numbers even more, leaving only what, like three or four people? It would just make the story way more intense. Anyways, in the right city, Natsu is having a conversation with Wraith, and Wraith explains that only dragon slayers can see him, so that's why he joined Diablos. He also explains that the reason that he hasn't passed on yet is because he needs to find the man who stole his life. And until he finds that man, he needs to get stronger. Wraith then uses a move called Dragon Spirit, which puts Natsu down for the count. And while Natsu is down, Wraith rips out his soul. This was a really cool ending to the chapter, but it makes me wonder if Hiro is going to take a Seven Deadly Sins approach with the situation here. Because like in Seven Deadly Sins, you have this character who is part of the Ten Commandments, she's a demon, and she rips out a soul from a dude named Escanor, and she eats the soul, but Escanor is all about the sun, so his soul is super hot, and that sets her on fire, and then the soul goes back to Escanor, and that's basically how it went down. So I'm wondering if he's gonna go with that type of approach. I hope he doesn't though, because that would just mean that he straight up ripped off a scene from Seven Deadly Sins. I hope he finds a different way for Natsu to get his soul back. Say for instance, Wraith can see somebody's future when he looks into their soul. And maybe he sees that Natsu will help Wraith find his killer. And that's what causes him to give Natsu his soul back. But I don't know, we'll just have to find out in the next chapter. Anyways, thank you all very much for watching. I hope that you all enjoyed. If you did, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you all in the next one. Peace out, everybody.